I asked you to give me some animations to reverse engineer and I got these. So in this video, we're going to learn how to make this animated poster as requested by Master Freak 2. So for starters, I created this scene in Illustrator and sent that to After Effects. From there, I decided to focus on recreating the effect on just the outer sea to figure out what they did to get this dope aesthetic. But it wasn't immediately obvious to me how they did it, so I went with my first idea, something with trim paths. So this is what I came up with, and I created this by using trim paths on the outer sea where the end is set to 0.1 to get the circle, and then I animated the offset from 359.5 degrees to zero, and then back to 359.5 degrees, with 60% influence to the easing on either side, and that gives us this swinging action. Then I created this trail layer, which also started out as the outer sea layer, where I animated a trim path effect from 100% to zero on the start and end with a 60% ease, and then offset the end keyframe slightly to get this. Then I just duplicated that internal shape layer group a bunch of times, changing the color for each duplicate to get our four colors. Then I just played around with offsetting the timing of each duplicate's trim path animation, and I also adjusted the end keyframes of the duplicates to create longer trails. And now things get a bit interesting as we finish this off because we need to add a fast box blur set to 40, then a CC composite set to stencil alpha, which uses the layer itself as a mat. Then a levels effect where the alpha is dragged in from the right, removes the transparency, and now the layers blend really nicely. Now we need to duplicate the trail layer, then reverse each internal path, like this, move it over to halfway through the animation, split it at the end with Control, Shift, and D, and then drag the new split layer below the first trail and drag it to the start of the animation, and this creates the loop. But overall, this is quite an overcomplicated setup and it's missing a few key things like the transparency in our original and the aesthetic still doesn't look right to me. But I had another idea, the echo effect. So remember that dot we animated earlier? I started with that and dropped in an echo effect and then I started fiddling around with the settings. And through some trial and error, I ended up adding an extra zero after the decimal point to the echo time, changing the number of echoes to 100, which creates a nice trail for our dot and then by changing the decay to something like 0.8, we can fade out the echoes. I knew I was onto something because this would not only create the transparency we're looking for, but it would also allow some rad blending between the colors. So I duplicated this layer and placed it below, changed the color to yellow, and then I just increased the number of echoes by 50 and increased the decay to 0.94. Then I repeated this with the pink layer, increasing the number of echoes and decay, and I did the same with the final duplicate. And in case you were wondering, I added a slight blur to the bottom three trails to match our reference. And this is the result. It's certainly much cleaner and aesthetically pleasing, but I will say this method is a bit of a hardware hog. It really increased the previewing time, especially after I repeated this process for every segment of the sea. But the results are worth it. Before we get to the final step, I just wanted to point out to some of these commenters that I haven't said one filthy thing in this entire video. So remember to fuck that like button because we all know it loves being smashed and share this video with your motion design friends so they can smash too. Because as we know, sharing is caring and there's nothing wrong with sloppy seconds. The final step was to pre-compose all of this and do a variation on our looping trick from before by splitting the layer at the end and then dragging it below and to the start of the timeline and it just needs to be trimmed to somewhere around here. Then for the final styling and textured glow, I added an adjustment layer with a glow effect with the glow radius set to 100 and the intensity set to 0.6. Then for the grain, I added a noise HLS, and the reason I used this noise effect over the regular noise effect is that it doesn't animate. So with this, I changed the noise to grain, and then the lightness to 3%. Now, the only thing left to do is to add a texture layer. And Ben Merritt has us covered with this texture he created, which is available for free. So let's drop that in, add a mask and reposition the layer, change the blending mode to screen, and then the opacity to 30%. And look at this glorious reproduction. And if you want to see the next video in this series where I reverse engineer pro animations, click on this video.